Continuing somewhat on the theme of youth development, our next guest is an extremely interesting story to tell, and that's of Athletic Bilbao, who since 1912 have uh, had an unwritten rule, uh, and there's a very clear reason why it's unwritten, I think, but an unwritten rule in that they only bring players in who were born in the Basque country. Uh, it's a fantastic, fa fascinating story on local uh, development of footballers, and to tell that story, I would like to invite John Berestegui onto the stage. Thank you, John. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Socrates this kind invitation to Miami. It is a big pleasure to have the opportunity to explain to you how we deal with the management of the club through the local talent and our values. Our model is not better than any other model. It's just different, but at the same time, it can be successful and sustainable. Let me first Although many of you know us very well, introduce the club. <clears throat> Athletic Club is a professional football club based in Bilbao, in the province of Biscay, in the Basque Country. The city has 350,000 inhabitants and the metropolitan area has 1 million. The city is an example of transformation from steel industry and shipyards to culture, innovation and services. Bilbao was named Best City of Europe 2018, and it is worldwide known for the Guggenheim Museum and our chefs. In the Basque Country, you can find the highest concentration of Michelin stars. And by the way, in our stadium in Samames, in the VIP area, all chefs with Michelin star of Biscay cook for the for the attendants. This is the these are the the, the, the cookers. <laughs> And of course, the best club in the world is there, Athletic. <laughs> this was an opportunity to show you the, the, our, our old stadium. The club was established in 1898, and since 1928, date of the foundation of La Liga, we have played always in the top division. Only three clubs have the record. Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Athletic. And only four clubs in Europe have played always in the top division and one of the four clubs is Athletic Club. Either more, more significant is that 15 from 20 teams that are playing in the first division now in Spain, in the top division, have been in the second division in the last 19 years. Athletic is fully owned by its members who decided in, in 1912 to compete only with local talent, fielding players either born or trained in, uh, the, in the Basque Country. To understand our philosophy, I have to refer to our values. Values are principles and beliefs that guide our behaviors and should be reflected in everything the organization does daily. Athletic club values are historic, connected to the vast territory, transmitted through generations, and they define and guide the long-term club strategy. They are present in the daily life of people connected with the organization. <coughs> club management is based in three, in three pillars. The first one, local trained players. Local trained players born or trained in the Basque Country. 
And our philosophy is about integration. It's not about exclusion, I, and I would like to explain you this, this point in depth. Let's imagine that the company any of you works for opens a delegation in Bilbao. And your son or daughter plays soccer, and he or she grows and trains in the Basque country. They could play for the club. It's not only for Basque players. It's not only for people that has been born in Bilbao. It's about everybody, okay? The second pillar, the academy. We need to be as good at the best trainer, training players. The players are the heart of the club. We take risks, but if the organization believes, innovates, and works hard, the model runs. And the third pillar, the members, the socios. Member sovereignty. We have no private capital. Each of the 45,000 members take the decisions in the club. <clears throat> it's a different way of competing. Winning is very important for us, of course, but how we do is much more important. One statistic, 80% of the supporters of the club prefer Athletic was relegated before giving up Athletic Club's philosophy. <clears throat> what do others say about us? Lekip, maybe the sports most relevant newspaper in the world, wrote about us in the decade of 30s. The Guardian, England, said, Athletic can teach a lot to many companies about risk-taking and innovation. And I like very much this one from Financial Times. It's just this year. Uh, last month. Uh, Financial Times said, while modern sport obsesses over the use of science and statistics to unlock a winning formula, athletic stand alone in offering a different answer. It's led more by faith than logic. Of course, we use statistics, we use science, we train, but we think that the formula needs uh, faith and identity from the, from, the, from the players if we really want uh, it to work. These are club records, who are in the fifth position in the historical classification of La Liga, and uh, ranked number 39 in, in, in UEFA ranking. The governance, as I told you before, uh, we're a members club, and it has some effects. We're, non -profit, uh, we are a non-profit, we are a non-profit association, so we don't pay dividends, and we don't have access to capital market. The board do answer personally for debts of the club, and each member has one vote. So, members are on the top of the pyramid. They elect every four years the board of directors, and they elect the assembly of delegate members. The assembly of delegate members is an audit body, and a member with endorsement from other nine members could be part of the assembly of delegate members. And they audit the board of directors, and the board of directors deals with the club's administration. <coughs> it could seem that the main difference between athletic and other clubs is the training players' philosophy. But this is not a structural difference, but rather an operational difference. We, where the club is and wants to be fundamentally different, unique, is in our ambition to remain firmly and sure to the sporting nature of the game by promoting the values that identify the, the club, not only on the field, but also of it, by retaining true affinity to the local community and living the development, uh, the, development, the development philosophy. Players represent the territory, the values, the friends, the family. And of course, uh, it is an evidence that uh, if we have chosen this way of, of management, it has a uh, direct effect on, on the account. We will compare our figures with the ones of the rest of the teams of La Liga, with the exception of Real Madrid or Barcelona. We, we call it um, La Liga Net, because um, incomes from, uh, of Madrid or Barcelona and, and expenses sheet of Madrid or Barcelona is so big that it disturbs all the figures. This is the expenses distribution of La Liga Santander, not considering Football Club Barcelona and, and Real Madrid. And the big differences are 
the species distribution of La Liga is the, is the first line, the second one is Athletic Lab, and as you can see, the difference between the percentage of expenses distribution on sporting staff uh, of all the clubs of La Liga and Athletic Lab, there's a big difference. Um, the cost of processing, the, the extremely reduced market we have, uh, has, has made consequence the inflection of the salaries because retaining talent is very expensive for us. And the second big difference on the other hand, difference on the other hand is that uh, we have very few signing of, of new players, so the cost of players amortization is, is, is lower than, than the average. <coughs> and if we analyze the income structure, stru structure I will uh, remark three lines. The first one, the match day. Match day incomes are twice the average. Why? Of course, we do. We have a very good ticketing and hospitality program, but I think that we should go far away. The conclusion is that identity and loyalty are very close linked. Fans understand that they are represented by the club and the players, and the direct reaction is to come to the stadium and to support the team. The second difference are TV rights. Difference is something that the market values. And the third one is the incomes from the transfer of players. Transfer of players is not uh, part of our business plan. It's true that we have, got, we have got many money from the payment of the buy, buyout clauses of some players, as we uh, will see later on, uh, but it is not in our business plan. We need to retain talent. <coughs> If we analyze European clubs, match the ticketing incomes, athletic club is ranked in the position 20. The incomes are comparable to high developed markets as Germany or England. So, some financial considerations. Independence from sport results, I think is fundamental if you want to run a, a club. You, your, your, P&L can, cannot depend on the sporting results because uh, they are not for sure, you know. Second one, the business plan uh, has no income from the sale of, of players. Third one, squad stability, low expense in players amortization. Third one, identity. Identity has direct impact in fan engagement. <coughs> Another accounting um, consideration very important for for club training players uh, for, for club uh, for tra uh, player training clubs as, as us is that uh, investment in players from the academy has zero value in the balance sheet. You cannot activate the value of the of the player you you, you train. And and to finish, uh, the the business is sustainable. It's true we have had big incomes of money from from the payment of buyout clauses of, uh, of uh, players. Um, Bayern paid 40 million euros for Javi Martinez in the eight last years. Uh, Manchester United paid 36 million euros for Ander Herrera. Um, Aymeric Laporte was bought by Manchester City for 65 million euros. And um, Keparcia Galaga left to Chelsea for 80,000 80 million euros uh, as well. This is in eight seasons, the, the incomes that uh, we have got from the payment on, of buyout uh, clauses has been 221 million euros. But the net, the net benefit of the club in this period has been 277 million euros. So the model is sustainable and as average we have a benefit uh, a net benefit of, cillion, of 7 million euros uh, per season. KPNG publishes every year a ranking of the most valuable clubs in Europe. I will rank in number 25. And if we look to the academy, to the youth academy, winning with players is really our mission is training and educating players to be prepared to compete at the highest level. 
every single player has to be a representation of the club. And which one are the principles of the academy? Talent, a train. The player as the cornerstone in the training process. The game is the means. Develop players' personal formation. Our player has to respond to the demands of current football and at the same time, at the same, at the same time has to understand that represents the values of the club. Look, since 1990, 2.6 players from the Youth Academy per season have made their debut with the, play, with the first team and they have played at least 10 matches with the first team. The figure is great, but uh, as we fit from the territory, from the community, we have a responsibility of educating our youngs because 90% of the players will not play for the club. So we need to return them to the community with the best education and values. It's not only about training them. So in the club, around the player, we have to create the appropriate ecosystem, coaches, psychologists, medical staff, clinical staff, so the player grows as player and as individual, both. And what about the coaches? What we demand from our coaches and technicians? Of course, technical abilities and football knowledge, but we look at the same, at the same time for an educator, the human factor of coaches, self-knowledge and learning skills. Coaches who come out of the comfort zone, who push the limits, who interact with players, self costing coaches. We look for an educator that works for the player, but not for himself. <clears throat> but the club not only trains players looking at the academy, there is a strategic plan for the territory. We are three million people, just three million people, and five professional clubs for three million people. Athletic Club, Real Sociedad, eh, Alaves, Osasuna, and Eibar. So, uh, we have to trust local coaches and local clubs to train our players. We have a big team of scouts, but the scouting itself makes no sense if there is no material, if there are not potential good players. The club has 150 brother clubs in the region. We help them to get the best trained coaches and develop our methodology. We monitor the progress of young players and they come to our academy to improve the skills and the understanding of the game. This is a map where our players did born in the first team, and at average, 75% of the players from the first academy come from the from 75% uh, uh, of the players uh, from the first team come from our youth academy. I like very much this map because the map shows clubs where club trained players are at least half of the squad. As you can see, there's just one one green point in, in the countries of the big leagues, and that one is athletic. <laughs> but it is not only about the quantity, it's about quality. Athletic club is ranked sixth among main training clubs in the big five leagues. And fundamentally, it is about giving opportunities to the young players. How that the, the first table are the percentage of minutes completed with the first team of hand ground players. Look, between 29 and 2018, the percentage of, cl of club trained players in the squads of teams from the 31 European top divisions went down year by year from 23.2% to 16.9%. There's not a real commitment, at least in the big five, uh, five leagues, to give opportunities to the club trained players. Clubs give priori priority to short-term results over long-term strategies. Academy to strategies. Many clubs visit every season to our academy to know of the secret of uh, training players for the, for the first team. And the answer is not in our academy. We are good but not much better than others training, apply, training players. Where is the difference? So where is the difference? We always give young players a chance and we always obtain a response, a response from them. Some considerations about the, our club training uh, policy. 
first one, training players is a long distance hurdle race. The model will be sustainable only if there's a balance between the new signings and the academy. Which ones are the key factors? Efficient and professional work structures, conviction, conviction courage, and confidence. Since um, 1982, we have been 25 years without playing a final. It's true that we were playing 25% uh, 20 of the seasons in, in European competitions, but we didn't get any final. In the last eight seasons, we have played seven times in Europe, one Champions League, two cup finals. We have won one Super Cup and one, one great uh, one final of Europa League. It's true that there are cycles, but if you are patient and you are confident in the, um, uh, in the model, the model runs. And of course, it's necessary a commitment with investments. Our annual investment academy and agreement with department clubs is 14 million euros. 14 million euros every season for the academy. And of course, the investment in infrastructures. We have invested 30 million euros in the last five seasons. More considerations, threats, cycles, the main one. It's impossible to have good players every season. It's impossible. You have to be patient. Second one, the market. The market is the wall. With the Bosman Law, Cochonou, you can get, clubs can get uh, players from all over the world and they can play. And of course, the inflation of the salaries of players and, and agents. The exponential increase of revenues in football has that consequence. And for us, that we have 140 million euros expenses budget, it's, it's not easy to, to, to compete with the, with the big teams. And the last consideration um, is that the regulations are ineffective. Many of you will know about a uh, home ground player rule that UEFA and some national uh, leagues um, um, uh, deal with. It, it had, this rule had some, some objectives. It were encourage local training players, increase openness and fairness of European competition, prevent stock peeling of players, and reestablish a local, a local identity at clubs. It's uh, an evidence that the rule has failed. Today, there are fewer home ground players performing in leagues across Europe. There is not openness in European competitions. Clubs are implementing even more elaborated loan or feeder team mechanisms to enable them to stockpile players. And the local identity at clubs seems to be getting diluted with every passing year. I think, I really think that UEFA should study the development of a new real proposal that would enable achieving those stated goals in a more effective way. Matt Letizier, former player of Southampton, said once, to play in the best clubs is nice, but there is a much more difficult challenge. Play against them and beat them. I dedicate myself to that. In 2015, the price for those players who dedicated their world career to a single team was created for the club. Of course, the first prize was for Matt Letizier, but Paolo Maldini, Seb Mayer with, with uh, Bayern, Carles Pujol, Barcelona, Mali Monstro, and Billy McDill, they have received the one club men prize from, from Athletic Club. Before finishing my presentation, uh, I would like to thank the support and friendship to all Basques and our fans in the, in the USA. In the United States, there are a large community of Basques, mainly located in California, in Idaho, Nevada, Washington, and Oregon, and they organized a big event in July. Uh, last time we were uh, with them was in 2015, and we will visit them this summer again. <laughs> and of course, we will play any other, in any other state uh, as well. And to finalize, I would like to show you a short video that resumes the, the speed of the, of the club.
San Mames, Caupada, en su sale. She is the eldest female member of the club. She's marvelous. <laughs> Thank you. This was everything from my side. Uh, see you in summer. I'm sorry, can, can you repeat me? Because I cannot listen to very well from here. The secret, you know, um, if you have a talented uh, uh, player, they will play for sure in the first team. If you have talent at home, they, they, they will play in the first team. The secret is being able to have uh, standard players and train them to be able to compete with the first team. That's the main objective. If you have Iker Muniain or, I don't know, or Fernando Llorente or, um, or Iñaki Williams, they will play with the first team for sure. The secret is because each cycle is impossible to have uh, five, six, seven good players. You need, you need to combine talent and maybe players that, that, are, that are not so talented, but they are able to compete in the top division. And of course, you have to train, uh, um, you have to work a lot with, uh, with the young players and you have to prepare them. But uh, if they identify with the values of the team and you give them a chance, they always respond. Of course, no, uh, not 100% of the players respond. But it's a question of giving opportunity to young players. Yeah, there's a question there. Hello, uh, my name is Jose Pablo, I'm with the FBA. I have a question regarding the strategy for Athletic. Uh, you say that they want to promote youth players to the first team. 
and you cannot have six, seven, eight players from the first team to be able to to uh, display in the first team and compete in the biggest leagues in Europe and win championships. Uh, what is the strategy in terms of how do you retain these players when the bigger clubs come knocking on the door since you only have a certain region that you can choose these players from? I uh, Normally when a big club calls us because they are interested in a big uh, player, the first thing I will, I will tell him is uh, why are you looking at Bilbao? You know, you have all over the world to choose a player. <laughs> why Bilbao? <laughs> Uh, no, this was a, it was a, it was a joke. Um, uh, average players from the academy to the first team is 2.6. Um, and of course, uh, you have to balance players that uh, are uh, for for seven, eight years in in the first team with the ones that uh, gi uh, that give the step from the B club to the to the first club. And you have to play with the times uh, where the, the, the team needs to renew with new players. And you have veterans on the one side and the players that are coming from the academy on the other side. And with the big teams, you know, um, in, in Spain we have the buyout clauses. Uh, it's a pity because in England, for example, uh, they don't have, players don't have uh, buyout clauses. And if the club doesn't want to sell a player, there, there is no transfer. And in the negotiation with the players is something that is quite important for us because uh, it's our guarantee uh, players not to leave the club. Uh, we have uh, some special cases now in the club because there has been uh, one of our players decided not to have buy at close in the contract and some other players uh, that, uh, have been renewing uh, the contract with us and they have chosen not to have buy at closes uh, as well as if they were in England. Yeah. Uh, here. Uh, so I have two questions. One on the soccer side, on the football side, and then the other one on the business side. So on the one on the football side is that you mentioned a lot about cycles, right? Yeah. So can you elaborate a little bit more on how do you manage those cycles? Because with the rule, in like non-written rule that you have, you need to identify those wide gaps and then identify who you will either develop or on, uh, from yeah, of the course. academy or uh, uh, buy, uh, I mean, buy in the market that is also um, matching the criteria of being Basque trained, right? So can you elaborate more on how do you manage the structure within the club that is doing all those analysis? So that's on the soccer side. On the business side, I saw that on your numbers, the commercial and the match day um, um, numbers are quite strong, right? And, and you compare it, if you see the top 20, they're they're from teams that are in, in big cities, right? So you see those big uh, London in, in some German cities that are big. Uh, so how do you bring those commercial partners or how do you leverage the stadium uh, coming from a small city as Bilbao, right? Compared to London or Madrid, right? So those are the two questions. Okay. Mm, the first one, uh, of course, you, you have, uh, it's very important to have a long-term uh, long strategy. And um, you, uh, the team has been able, uh, the team, the, the, um, the, the, the technicians, the sporting director, the club, uh, needs uh, to be able to predict uh, which players could uh, play for the team, for, for the fir first team, and which players will not play for the first team. Sometimes you, you have to go to the market and sign new players. The problem is that our market is very, very short. And it's very expensive because if we look for a Basque player in any other club, they know that they can ask uh, big amounts of money, and we have in the, uh, an, an inflation uh, over the cost of the of the uh, of the market cost of, of the player. So it's very important to have a long-term strategy if we know that uh, there's a forward or a left hand that uh, we have to create <laughs> in the academy. Uh, we have to find um, players that could play in the left hand, even if they are right. And we have had cases like that one during many and many seasons. Uh, that's the first question. The, the second question, um, 
Um, Athletic is a quite different case from Real Madrid and Barcelona. Both are, uh, the, the, the three clubs are members club, but they have the possibility of being member and having a season ticket. In our case, the statutes of the club state that if you are a member of the club, you are a season ticket holder of the club. So 45,000 members of the club, they always go to the stadium because it's a right you have as a member of the, um, of the club. And it's a question of identity. Of course, you have to have, you, you need to have a very good hospitality program with, uh, I, I have visited many VIP areas in the world and it's one of the best, for sure, for sure. Um, we get an agreement with the um, all Michelin stars of Biscay to cook for the attendants of the VIP area. Um, um, but but uh, secret is uh, identity because because the direct result of identity is loyalty, and fans always go to to the match, and uh, of course they spend money. Uh, our season ticket is one of the um, of the highest of the Spanish league, and you can uh, ask for money to people if you give them something uh, on the other side. In, a, in our case, the identification with the values of the club is the is the secret. Yes, another question. Well, one quick one. Hi, uh, Andreas, already with Ucom. Just out of curiosity. Why is uh, the player rule you have established not in place for your head coaches? I'm sorry, I haven't understood. You, you have that rule established that you only work with homegrown players. Yeah. That rule is not in place for your head coaches. Is there a particular no, reason for no, that? No, 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 we don't have. Uh, the club was funded by English people. Um, uh, the rule was something natural. There, there was a moment that there were not uh, foreigners and uh, all the players were from, from the Basque country, and the club decided it was 1912 to play just with player strength in the territory. But we have had, uh, at, at, uh, at uh, those years, we had uh, foreign aid trainers, and we have maintained having foreign aid trainers from, from, the, from, from the history of the club. Our last uh, foreign trainer was uh, Marcelo Bielsa, that he is now training Leeds. Um, and, and there's no tradition on that. <laughs> and we have had many English trainers as well <laughs> during our history. Luis is there. <laughs> uh, John, one, one question. Uh, the club is looking, is keeping, uh, keeps to look for uh, uh, players from Bach origin or? No. No, 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 never, no, never, at all, never. at all. The, the rule is not written, and our statutes say nothing about the rule. It's uh, an unwritten rule. Um, the rule says that uh, you have to be born in the Basque country. If you are born in this country, you can play, of course. Or you, or you have been, uh, or you need to, to be trained in the Basque country. Uh, we don't look for people in Brazil to go to the Basque country, train them, and they play for the first team. Okay, it has to be for natural reasons. Imagine that the parents of um, Iñaki Williams, when, when they left Africa to go to Bilbao, and it was because they need uh, to work, <laughs> they went there by natural reasons. And Iñaki began to play football in the Basque Country, so he plays with us. We, don't, we are not looking for players with Basque origin all over the world to, to take them and, and, and to come to the Basque Country. Somebody else may have kind of touched on this a little bit, but I guess my question was, with such an incredible youth program, you obviously need to have incredible youth coaches. Where do you guys usually look to find your youth coaches? So All our youth coaches are from the, from, the, from the region, from the Basque Country. Of course, we have our methodology, and we span our methodology to all our brother clubs. So we are forming them every season. And we take it, uh, and, and uh, we choose the best teams, the best coaches uh, of the local area, of the broader teams, and they work with us. So there's a process w where we first train the players, 
with our methodology, with, uh, with our principles, with our way of training. And if they are good enough, they are coming to our academy to train to our players, but it's local train play. They are local train uh, coaches. Many of them, for example, are in Aspire in, the, um, in Qatar now. <laughs> Because they have been taking, they 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 have um, signed players from from our region, from from Biscayne uh, for the for the World Cup. Hi, good afternoon. A question uh, with regard to uh, looking to increase fan engagement outside of Spain, with the policy being so, the policy for players being so locally based. Um, do you see that? How does that affect your development of fans outside of uh, the region? It affects. It, it has a big, a big effect because, for example, I was looking at the figures of TV audience in Spain. Um, fifth um, team was Espanol. Espanol has signed Gu Li. He's a Chinese player. And if you sign a Chinese player, you open all over the world or the market you want. For example, when uh, Marcelo Bielsa was our coach, we had a high impact in, in South America, in Argentina, etc. So what we try to do is to explain, and this is a great opportunity for us, to explain that uh, making things in a different way, it can work as well. And uh, they say in the business, in all business models, being different, <laughs> if you are able to, uh, to have success, uh, helps to open markets and we're trying to explain our case and to expand our case because I would like many other clubs in the world um, to bet for training players for the, for the first team. Are you okay? Thank you. Thank you, John. I think that was a fascinating...